We're making pot roast today. We are going to use some super secret flavor weapons. So I have my chuck roast. We'll get back to that in one second. But I have a pan here where I'm gonna heat up some oil and we're gonna brown it because why? Well, brown food tastes good. Ah, oh, excellent. That's what we're doing. So I'm taking my pot roast. I'm actually tying this guy up because I'm going to braise this piece of meat whole, low and slow in liquid. That's what braising is. This is not a like, let me think of uh, what to make for dinner. I have 45 minutes and let me whip out a pot roast. So, but I'm tying this guy up so that I can actually slice it later on. It keeps my piece of meat all tight and firm. Otherwise it would just kind of fall all apart. That's what braising does. So we just go over my hand like this. We go underneath a little bit. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. We go downtown, underneath, and we start right back at the beginning where we started. We finished there. Excellent. Look at that. Nice. Okay. So my oil's nice and hot. I'm going to add this to my pan, and I'm going to hear, ah, yes. So we're going to be creating brown food. Ha <laughs> ha. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you for coming, extra string. Here we go. So we're listening for the nice big huge sizzle. I love that. All right, I have my standard flavor bases. I have celery, I have a little garlic, I have thyme for my thyme bundle, and I have a couple of onions that while my meat is browning, I'm gonna get prepped up. Oh, beautiful brown food. Hello, gorgeous. Look at this, big brown meat, been achieved. Oh, looks gorgeous. So, look at that, we're ditching the excess fat in there. And I'm gonna start over with a tiny bit of new oil, just, you know, to keep things nice and fresh. And I'm going to toss in my celery and onions that I prepped up. This is my mise en place, look at this. Piece of cake, and it makes things so much fun and easy. And Oh, smelling delicious. So we're going to sweat these. I'm gonna give it a little salt and then toss in my garlic and thyme, my standard flavor bases. Yes. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Smelling delightful. Okay. There we go. Got a little pinch of crushed red. Now I'm adding some garlic to this. So I've got tomato paste. This always goes in braised stuff. And a little bit of red wine vinegar. So I'm using red wine vinegar in the place of wine. It has that acidic function and it helps tenderize our meat a little bit. About a half a cup or so of this. I'm using some beautiful citrus flavors. We've got our star anise going on there, which is a warm sort of Mm, sort of along the lines of cinnamony kind of things. Um, let's add a couple of these. Two of these, and look how pretty they are. And why are they called star anise? Because look at, they're stars. Hello, stars. This makes me a superstar. Okay, a couple of bay leaves. So it's kind of interesting. We have like the meeting of the old and the new going on here. Three bay leaves, my thyme bundle, and my chicken stock. So I'm gonna start with about two cups of this guy and put that in. Oh, beautiful flavor is happening. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then I'm gonna put my meat back in here and then we're gonna toss this guy right in the oven. So just, we're gonna get everyone all nice and hot for a second. Meat back in the pan. We kind of snuggle that right in there. So we're making kind of like a meat jacuzzi. Hello, big meat jacuzzi. And we're gonna put a lid on it. Now, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to toss this in here and I'm gonna check it in about an, oh, it's a heavy, heavy pan. I'm gonna check it in about an hour. So I'm now prepping up some butternut squash and these cool things. 
These are Jerusalem artichokes, or we call them sun chokes. Six or seven figs. I'm just gonna cut the stems off and I'm gonna cut them into quarters and you'll be like, oh, wow, I just got a lovely little sweet burst in there. Okay. Oh, this smells so good. That is good stuff. The vinegar gives it a really bright flavor and I feel that little bit of orange zest and the star anise. So I'm adding all of my other super secret flavor weapons in there. Oh. And I'm going to return my uh, meat to my pan. I look at it and we're like, oh, look at that's getting beautifully tender. It's not quite exactly where I need it to be. So I'm going to return this to the oven for 45 more minutes. So I'm gonna roast it or I'm gonna braise this for 30 minutes with the lid on and then the last 15 minutes, take the lid off so the flavors really have a chance to to concentrate. And so when we get to dinner, everything will be like, oh, big, huge, delicious, really excellent flavors. So look at this gorgeousness. So I'm just gonna give this an untie. When we tie meat up, we have to remember to untie it always so we don't floss and eat at the same time. So that's not the multitasking we want to do. So thank you for coming. Oh, look at this gorgeousness. Oh, yes. It smells so good. I'm just gonna give this a little slice. Oh, beautiful. So here we go. We put a few pieces of that on there. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. All right. So a little bit of my sauce, my braising liquid. So this really concentrated in flavors. I took the lid off for the last 15 minutes of cooking time, and I wanna make sure I get all the stuff in one bite. Oh, the sweet of the figs and the squash. I did an excellent job. I'm a happy, happy girl, and this is so not your mama's pot roast.